Military vets make a lot of people proud with their service. Now, some of our neighbors are working to serve them back. And what do London, New Zealand, and Germany have in common? We'll show you coming up. Texas Tech is proving it's one of the most unique universities in the state. And it's not just for having a football coach that resembles Ryan Gosling. This is the MCTV Weekday Update. Welcome to the Thursday edition of MCTV Weekday Update. I'm Sasha Wilson. And I'm Lucinda Holt. Recently, there's been a focus on veterans' hardships after their military service. The Lubbock Chamber of Commerce and Texas Workforce Commission teamed up to help. They held the first ever Red, White, and You Veterans Job Fair at the Lubbock Civic Center. Reporter Jason Pearson takes us there. We are here today with Workforce Solutions to celebrate their Red, White, and You hiring event, and we are proud to call them members of the Lubbock Chamber of Commerce. On Friday, the Texas Workforce Commission, along with the Lubbock Chamber of Commerce, put on the Red, White, and New event to get vets currently out of work a job or vets that have a job that may want to change the scenery some more options. I talked to the Director of Business Development, Danny Solis, and asked him what were the advantages of hiring a veteran for an employer. If they've already uh, they come in with uh, trained skills already, they're disciplined, they know how to take orders, uh, they're dependable, they show up for work. There were over 81 prospective employers there trying to recruit veterans for their particular employment teams. Ask Chris Aguirre, a military veteran, how he felt about all this love that the employers were showing the military veterans. I feel good. Um, you know, you're doing something for the veterans here today. Uh, a lot of us need jobs, you know. Some coming back, some still looking. <laughs> In just a little over three years, this Red, White, and You campaign has led to over 3,500 hirings of former military veterans. For MCTV, I'm Jason Pearson. So, how does this sound? Traveling the world capturing photos and videos while earning course credit? Sound like fun? That's what students learned about at the first ever College of Media and Communication Study Abroad Showcase. Students could learn about three trips, a May semester in London, 16 days in New Zealand, and a month in Germany. All three trips have happened before and the professors and some students from previous trips were in the first floor lobby Wednesday from 10 to 2 to talk about the trips. I think the hardest thing was picking just one. You can earn course credit right here in Lubbock, of course, and if you study the arts, getting an education at Tech just got a bit more prestigious. Reporter Randy Redding shows us why. Music, art, theater, and now dance. Texas Tech officially has all four of its art programs accredited nationally, making it the only school in the state to do so. Accreditation is a form of notoriety within national standards for higher education, and it's no small feat. School of Art academic advisor Ryan Sheckle shared his thoughts on the accreditation process. We feel that our programs are doing what they're supposed to be doing. Uh, accreditation is a mark of meeting the standards set by our fields, and uh, we're excited to be able to have all of our programs um, accredited and um, to present something of a unified uh, approach in quality um, and uh, standards. The accreditation um, process of getting accredited and, and being reviewed for accreditation is intended also to improve um, programs, not just maintain a minimum standard. Tech is now the only university in Texas with all four art programs accredited, and it only took two years. Junior apparel design and manufacturing major and theater arts minor, Brianna Maloney, told us what the new title means to her as a student. I don't know, it's an accomplishment for all of the art programs. Obviously I love art. I've taken art classes here, all of which were great classes. So it's just, you know, a little boost to know that they're all accredited. Since now Tech has accredited art programs, uh, that helps me in that when I do graduate and employers are looking at my degree, they're going to know she comes from a school with an accredited art program in multiple areas. Now with the accreditation of the dance program, Tech can expect more funds and admissions toward the performing arts. For MCTV, I'm Randy Redding. Students at the School of Art all got to express their creativity, but only a select few get to see their work exhibited on Gallery Wall. Reporter Lara Taupke caught up with a handful of those very grateful students. The annual Day of the Dead student exhibition opened on Texas Tech University's campus in the art building on October 15, 2014 and closed November 2, 2014. The exhibit, 
graphic interpretations too is a project embarked upon by students taking the course communication design 3383 type and image for this assignment instructors dirk fowler and dina hodges encourage students to interpret these familiar to the day of the dead celebration without relying solely on tradition and cliche imagery and test from the students work a guest artist made the selections for the exhibit Juan Labra, a junior from Arlington, Texas, talked about his piece, Hurried from This Life. I'm um, very excited. Um, I wasn't expecting my piece to make it, so it's pretty cool that it's going to be in the show. Justin Hoover, a junior from Hempstead, Texas, was also proud to have his piece called Expired in the exhibit. This was his first work to have publicly displayed. Uh, just the parameters that, we were, that were given to us by the instructor, um, as far as actual inspiration. Uh, the epitaph that I picked had expired on it so I started thinking about things that were expired and one of the things that came up was a parking meter so that's what kind of inspired me to do something like that. I found my favorite piece at the Texas Tech Interpretation Exhibit. Have you found yours? Zachary Patton, a junior from Amarillo, Texas, talked about the inspiration behind his piece in the exhibit called Heart and how honored he felt to be chosen to be in this exhibit. Uh, it's awesome. Uh, I feel really honored to be a part of such a great uh, holiday and event. The exhibit is now closed, so if you missed it this year, be sure to look for it around the same time next year for MCTV Lair Techie. If you were lucky enough to have gotten a ticket, there's a free dinner waiting for you tonight. But there's a catch. You have to solve a mystery. This is the Tech Activities Board, biggest event of the semester, and it's in the sub ballroom tonight. It starts at 7 and students will enjoy dinner while serving as detectives working to solve mystery unfolding around them. Unfortunately, if you didn't already get tickets to this popular event, it's too late. The Texas Tech Museum is hosting a peace paper workshop all this week. The start got delayed because of icy weather, which, is tra which trapped the organizers in Oklahoma on Monday. The project lets people make handmade paper and express their support for peace. Military vets are even able to turn their old uniforms into paper for art pieces. That peace paper project sounds pretty neat. Yeah, it does. And some students wanted some peace from humans versus zombies on campus last week. But not everyone. I saw a random free speech table that said, hey, you want to sign up for humans versus zombies? And I said, sure, I have no idea what that is. We'll turn your Nerf gun sights on the zombie horde here at Tech next. Plus, a bunch of other Red Raiders are finding themselves in a hairy situation. No, it's not zombies. We'll explain in two minutes. This mug may or may not be filled with something inappropriate, but what really matters is what's on the mug. Up next, I'll give you all of the details. It definitely has been cold here on the South Plains lately, but it looks like we're going to keep having this nice 60 degree weather for a while, although we could see some precipitation later this weekend. I'll have more coming up later. For now, we'll have more news after the break. Cook foods to the right temperature using a food thermometer. 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. Hey, everybody. Heart disease affects one in every three women in America, but you can fight back. There's no time to lose. Mothers, sisters, daughters, families, and friends, it's time to shout louder, stand stronger, and demand change. Let's go. To the Batmobile. Dang it. To the invisible jet. Dang it. Together, we can put an end to heart disease. It's time to go red for women. I could use your help. Yeah! Learn more from the American Heart Association at www.goredforwomen.org. They said I couldn't dream. Called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. Said a bottle couldn't see the ocean. Give up. Go back to the dumpster. 
but I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, I am what I've always wanted to be. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. Tab hosts dozens of events during the school year from the elaborate murder mystery dinner to free movies. Yeah, but only one event lets you put your mug on a mug. Reporter Janet Moreno explains. Tech students showed off their best mug shots and stroke a pose for Tab's Make Your Own Mug event. Students threw their guns up and personalized their photos at the first ever Mug Tab event. Tab member Colin Dublin headed the busy four-hour event and said he was very happy with the turnout. Uh, Today is Make Your Own Mug, where students can come, uh, make their own mug, uh, take a picture of them with, uh, by themselves or with their friends and have it pinned around to a mug with a double T on their side. It makes a great gift or it's just a great mug for their dorms. Oh, the turnout's been pretty good. Uh, we had about 66 people in the first hour, which is right about uh, what we expected. So it's turning out pretty well. The lines were long, but students waited patiently to get their photo taken in front of the green screen that was then steamed onto a mug. Students Sierra Megan and Leonard McKay took this opportunity to show off their holiday sweaters in a couple's pose. Um, I heard about it from him. He's in tab and we bought a whole bunch of ugly sweaters and needed a reason to use them, so we thought put them on a Christmas mug. <laughs> well, um, basically we, we had so much trouble finding like a pose, but like, we ultimately decided just like regular like a uh, couple pose or something. But I decided to go with this like big old fluffy jacket and um, she had like the Christmas sweater with the reindeers on it. I thought it was like adorable. About 250 mugs were made, and although the event was a big hit, Tab said they'll probably wait a couple of years before they bring the event back. For MCTV, I'm Janet Moreno. Tab always does a nice job with those, but when the university president hosts an event, it's quite a show. President Nellis used to host an autumn festival at his last institution, the University of Idaho. So he started this new tradition a couple of Saturdays ago here at Texas Tech. Visitors enjoyed live music, local vendors, food, and a trapeze show. Hospitality services had the street food truck out there, and lots of people showed up. And of course, the weather was great for Autumn Fest. Not so this week. We had lows down around 12 degrees Monday, and that came after blowing snow on Sunday. It didn't really warm up until yesterday, so winter is just around the corner. I'll be curious whether there's another Arctic blast coming our way anytime soon. Yeah, and I'm kind of curious what the weather will be like this weekend. Weather specialist Carly Smith is live in the Weather Center with a look at the forecast and more. Carly? Thanks, Lucinda. And you know what, Sasha? It looks like we aren't actually going to have another one of those rough Arctic blasts anytime soon. For the most part, lows will continue to be cool in the 30s, but highs will warm up into the 60s. So as far as tonight, we will be a little bit above the freezing point with the low at 34 degrees. Skies will be partly cloudy and the winds will be south very light and variable around one to five miles per hour, which is crazy saying for Lubbock. And so as we take a look at tomorrow's high, temperatures will warm into the 60s, 65 for the high. With partly sunny skies, it will feel kind of warm with the sun out and the winds won't be too bad either, five to 10 miles per hour from the south. So high temperatures across our area, Everyone, for the most part, is in the 60s. Post just a little warmer at 66, Plainview 64, Friona also at 64. So it looks like everyone across the South Plains is going to have a nice, warm uh, feeling afternoon. So as we take a look at what's going to happen this weekend, it does appear that we will have rain chances. For the most part, Lubbock will have about a 50% chance that will be Friday night into Saturday morning. And so more 
to our east, it will be worse with 70% and a higher percent chance for severe weather. So if you're planning any travel this weekend, um, if you get to leave early for Thanksgiving and you don't have to go to class Monday or Tuesday, you could run into some severe weather Friday night into Saturday morning. But for the most part, the South Plains shouldn't be too bad, just some nice rain and maybe some thunder and lightning. So once again, Friday's high will be 65. Saturday also 65 with a 20% chance throughout the day for rain because most of that chance will be Friday night into Saturday morning. The low will drop into the 40s, so it'll be a nice night Saturday or morning. That will be Saturday morning with west winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. Now Sunday, after the storms, the winds will pick up west winds northwest 20 to 30 miles per hour. So we possibly could maybe see some patchy dust and it might be a little, but it shouldn't be too bad with the low at 40 in the morning and then climbing into the 60s in the afternoon. Now our game day forecast, Texas Tech is playing Iowa State at Ames, Iowa and the kickoff is at 2.30. So right, it is cool there. That's like our low temperatures this weekend. And so kickoff will be 43 at 2.30. And as we head into the fourth quarter, it will drop into the 40s. Now temperatures will rise throughout the game. Around halftime will probably be the high, which is about 45 degrees. And so winds will be southwest 5 to 10 miles per hour. I do believe that Ames, Iowa is having some fog earlier that morning, but it should go away just in time for the Red Raiders to play. And it also looks like they could have some possible weather, maybe severe, but definitely some precipitation um, coming on Sunday. So it looks like it'll be great weather here. Maybe not so great in Iowa, but hopefully the Red Raiders can go up there and pull out that win. <coughs> Back to you guys. Thanks, Carly. So the weather was rough on the fall uh, semester edition of Humans vs. Zombies, but about 440 people still signed up to play. Reporter Jeff Bennell caught up with most of them. If you haven't noticed yet, tech students around campus have been role-playing a very popular post-apocalyptic fantasy, Humans vs. Zombies. Just like the virus plots in movies, almost everyone starts out as a human. A handful of them are already infected, and the humans have to fend them off with Nerf guns. Elaine Bruno, a moderator for the game, says she didn't know much about zombies in pop culture before signing up. I, I came into tech 2012 in fall and I saw a random free speech table that said, hey, you want to sign up for Humans vs. Zombies? And I said, sure, I have no idea what that is. And they explained it to me. I played for a semester and after that I, I, I fell in love with it and I applied to be a moderator and I've been a moderator ever since. Out of all the HVZ games played on campuses across the nation, she says Tech is one of the largest. About 400 people played last week. The game didn't draw in students only, though. Enrique Luna, a graduate assistant at the College of Media and Communications, did some research on the game. Uh, so, for instance, uh, my studies is on apocalyptic communication. Um, a lot of people think that means apocalyptic means the end of the world. That's not what it means. It just means when there's a serious change. Um, so in, in my communication, what I'm analyzing is the experience. Um, there's moderators. They're actually in charge of the game. All I did as a participant was play the game and observe and take notes. Um, uh, this will be, this last semester that I played, this, this past semester was my sixth season. It was my first season as a zombie. I'd never been caught before, but I wanted to see what it was like, so I let myself get caught and then took notes. None of the humans survived, but Bruno says about four of them had a last stand against a horde of their undead comrades. Final stand? What happens is every final mission, um, the humans that survive the very last mission get to have their final stand against the waves of zombies. And they just get to stand in a circle and zombies are just going to just flood them. And you have, your, you have a chance to live, but you get to do your best to survive. Reporting for MCTV, this is Jeff Bennell. You can bet there were a few close shaves during Human vs. Zombies. You may also have noticed that some other guys aren't shaving close at all. There's a reason for that. Lots of men in the tech community are joining in No Shave November. It's a campaign to raise awareness about cancer and money to fight it. The No Shave campaign is teamed up with the American Cancer Society. Some participants, like Dr. Jeff Graybeal, see the benefit in it. Usually when I have 
facial hair. Um, when it's not in November, it's more, you know, well kept. Um, and so I'm not doing that now. I'm just basically not shaving at all. I'm taking it literally. And I know the definition of if you look at the No Shave November website, you know, they say whatever you're comfortable with. So some people are more well kept, but I'm taking it literal and literally not shaving for the month of November. So why the beards? Because chemotherapy patients lose their hair. So the organizers thought this would be a nice way to embrace the hair in the fight against cancer. That's all for this Thursday edition of the MCTV Weekday Update. Thanks so much for joining us and be sure to check out ttuhub.net every day for more news. We'll see you next week.